Hello, my name is Ian McCone. This is the overview for Module 6B of the Darren Consult course. Here you have a summary of the things we're going to look at in this module. There's a video below on excisions on the trunk. You should uh, get the opportunity to look at that. It uh, goes into the uh, idea that the resting skin tension lines aren't the most important thing in determining the lines of excision on the trunk. It's usually the actual shape of the lesion that determines the uh, uh, the line that you're in fact going to take the lesion on. The other important thing in the back is that it has to be a bilayer closure. Uh, make sure you're closing the deep space. Make sure you've even got a uh, subcuticular stitch in and then just an external suture. There's really not much more than that. It's rare that you have to do flaps uh, on the back. If you do want to do a flap that will uh, conserve tissue, then the rhomboid is probably the best of the flaps to do. But the vast majority of lesions in the back can be taken out with a larger lips. Have a look, though, at the uh, video. It also goes into some aspects of uh, complications. Then, in this module, you also have two sections, one on the dermatoscopy of spits and the other on the dermatoscopy of reed nevi. Now, some people used to regard the reed nevus as a, a variant of a, of a spits nevus. Spits nevi can occur in children, can occur in adults. In children, they're usually not a great concern. You can, in fact, uh, um, observe them. There are two types of uh, spits, the pink spits and the dark spits. Uh, dermatoscopically, the pink spits is mainly going to just have dot vessels. There may be a little bit of pigment. The dark spit is uh, going to have generally peripheral clods, which are symmetrical. It may have some peripheral pseudopods uh, as well, but it's just a reflection of the rapid rate of growth uh, where you have these nests of cells laterally. Reed nevi are seen uh, in children and in adults. In adults, uh, reed nevus is particularly on the legs in female, and it's in younger females at that. The lesion can look quite uh, worrying in that it's often very dark, but it usually has pseudopods, and the pseudopods, again, are pretty symmetrical, as against the melanoma, where the pseudopods may just be um, in one segment of the periphery of the lesion. So you've got marked lines radial peripheral and often with pseudopods, um, little globular extensions at the ends of the lines radial peripheral. We'll look at some pictures on that as well. Uh, the tutorial topic is on epithelioma cuniculatum. Now, this name applies to a uh, probably papillomavirus induced uh, well differentiated SCC that occurs in the soles of the feet. It may have some small sinuses there. It looks like a giant wart, very slow growing. Uh, but as I say, it's a slow growing papilloma, papilloma virus SCC, well differentiated. There are variants of this uh, intraorally and uh, also in the genital area. And they go, they have different names applied to them, but we'll have a look at that as well. In the webinar itself, we're going to look at uh, these topics. I'm going to spend some time looking at lentico maligna, again because this is a common lesion and because there's often a fair bit of difficulty in the pathologist coming to the diagnosis early on. Very often you pick this clinically or dermatoscopically before the pathologist will confidently diagnose a lentico maligna. Spitz nevis and reed nevi we've already covered here. The dress syndrome is a curious um, a drug-induced syndrome where you uh, often have a drug reaction with eosinophilia. And we'll have a look at Nethertin's syndrome in the webinar itself. Nethertin's uh, usually isn't present at birth. I used to think that it was one of the causes of a... Um, uh, We've got an evoy, a, a newborn baby, a Claudian baby, but uh, it isn't. Often, Nelson's 
uh, can come on in the first uh, month of life, and the baby will go erythrodermic and will have quite a bit of scale, but uh, it may be delayed even beyond that. And later on, nephritins will show uh, characteristic lesions on the skin where you've got a double-edged scale, and it'll also show characteristic lesions in the scalp with bamboo hairs. So those will be the things that we'll go into in much more detail in the webinar itself. So this was the video uh, that goes over the uh, surgical aspects of this lecture. Have a good look at it. There's also a link here to anatomy lecture that you might want to um, look at. You really can't get enough anatomy uh, if you're doing skin surgery. Um, these are some other links that, uh, if you've got time again, have a look at those. Here you've got a lesion with uh, deep sutures plus some subcuticular uh, dermal sutures here anyway. Um, it may even need a subcuticular closure here or else external uh, nylon sutures. Um, this was a uh, surgical case from the, the Derm Surgery Diploma blog. And if you click on this, it should take you to the video that uh, describes the this particular this particular case. Um, sorry, this was the clinical image that we were talking about. This was the question, and if you click this link here, you'll get to the video that describes this. What else have we got? Yeah, this was just a dermatoscopy of uh, reeds and uh, and spitz nevi. This is a reed nevus. You can see all the lines radial peripheral here and uh, a few um, pseudopods there as well. This, though, is your typical spits that we spoke about. These are the peripheral globules or clods, usually much the same size. There's usually not a great variation. If you get a lot of variation, then you can consider that it may be a melanoma with rapidly growing uh, peripheral nests or cells. This was just part of the histopathology of Spitz nevi. Have a good look at it. Um, just enlarge these up. You'll see that the nests often come high up to the surface here, which gives partly responsible for the black color. Because if you've got melanin and melanocytes high up underneath the stratum corneum, the lesion is going to look black. And you tend to find cells in Spitz nevi are a combination of both epithelioid and spindle cells. Epithelioid means that they look like the epidermis here, and spindled. Um, just being cigar shaped. And they, they rain down like this. They're often vertically orientated. You know, people describe them as like hanging banana hanging sheaths of bananas. This was a pink spitz. These were the dot vessels that you'll usually see in a pink spitz. This was another pink lesion that arose in a young boy's leg and was a was a, a spitz as well. And again you can see the dot vessels. Here's again part of the histology of a, a, a spitz. Generally, the nevus cells disperse um, as you get to the base, which is a normal sort of finding in benign nevi. Whereas if you have well-defined um, borders to the nests in the dermis without the cells sort of dispersing in like this, then it's more suggestive of a melanoma. This here refers to the pink camino bodies that uh, probably represent aggregates of the basement membrane that are quite common in uh, Spitz nevi as well. There's the reed, the lines radial peripheral, few pseudopods there as well, dense homogeneous central hyperpigmentation. Some reed nevi, of course, do look very much like uh, like Spitz. Um, you know, you can see here that you just seem to have a lot of uh, peripheral globules that should be you should represent rapidly growing cells. And it does. These uh, reed nevi here have a lot more pseudopods, and they're distributed all the way around this particular lesion. This is the uh, histopathology of uh, reed nevi. Sometimes in reed nevi, you'll see areas of nests of cells that are joined up together and the, the nests or the cells themselves seem to be orientated horizontally like this. And at the periphery this is thought to um, 
be an explanation for the lines radial peripheral that you uh, you regularly see around uh, around Reed Neva. Um, the important journal article in this uh, was one that was in the uh, Dermatology Online journal, and it looked at the the dress uh, syndrome. We just bring that up just now. This is just a photograph from that particular uh, journal. It wasn't a, a you know a great case of the dress uh, syndrome. Uh, go and have a look at it and look at the dish syndrome that's associated with some drug reactions uh, as well. There's a scoring system that they use nowadays to assess whether a drug is likely to be responsible for this drug rash with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. That's where the uh, the acronym DRESS uh, comes from. Um, it's we don't see a lot of it. The, the drugs that are most likely to do this are the anti-epileptic drugs. And from memory, I think that's what this little boy was on. The tutorial topic we said was epithelioma cuniculatum. It refers to a rabbit burrow. Presents as a plant a wart. It's really a form of squamous cell skin cancer, rubus in nature. Um, yeah, there's one little fact for a multiple choice. Really, a therapy for these lesions is not usually recommended. So it may induce anaplastic transformation. But lymph node metastasis is very rare. And you need to do a deep incisional biopsy into this because you need to see the base to be able to, um, to, to, be able to say that it isn't, in fact, a maruca. Um, what else have we got? Some little questions you can look up the answers to. Yeah, and these were just, this is the bamboo here, um, Trichorexis nodosa. The picture that you see where one part of the shaft is invaginated into another, um, that's characteristic of the hair abnormalities that you see in Nifferton syndrome. And you can often pick this early in even an eyelash hair or, or part of the scalp hair. Um, these, these features are present early on in life. I've said here um, that Nethertons can present to Claudian Baby, but I don't think that's correct. Uh, have a little look at, well, let's look at this web page. I've said it, uh, it says it shows that. By the way, this is the double-edged scale that you um, can get in, uh, in Nethertons syndrome. Let's just have a quick look at this. Yeah, I think that's an erythrodermic baby. It's not necessarily um, a collodion uh, baby when you look at this. Um, when did this come on? It doesn't really say here. There is a gene defect um, in, the, um, in the keratin specific gene that controls the formation of a protein lecti in the skin and the thymus. It's a nice little page that's just to go on and see the skin uh, lesions that developed in this little boy who in fact had Nesseton syndrome. I think the skin defect is, um, is it Ichthyosis linearis circumflexa? Anyway, it's a double-edged scale. Okay, I think that was most of what you get in this particular module. But remember, you can um, view the videos of the Spitz and the Reed Nevi. You can also look at the um, video on excisions and the little video on this uh, surgical case that goes over the anatomy of the branches of the superficial temporal nerve here, um, especially where it's dangerous here over the zygomatic arch. Not as big a danger here because it splits up, but it's useful to uh, just go over the anatomy of, uh, of that area. Okay, I hope you enjoy this module. Thanks very much.